All right, tonight I got a fun little project I've been uh, planning on doing because I have three different CD DVD players of different uh, tiers of quality. Um, what we're gonna do tonight is this is kind of a just for fun experimental kind of thing. Um, we've got three different CD DVD players here, and. Uh, uh, we'll just run down here. This one is a uh, just a plain Jane bottom of the barrel Magnavox MDV 435 DVD CD player. I don't remember. It's probably from like uh, I think around 2005 or so. About 50 bucks, real cheap, just Walmart. But you know, basic, very plasticky, cheap CD player. And then. Moving on up, I, don't, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming these were around probably about 50 bucks. I don't even remember where I got I think I got this for free. Um, moving up the ladder, now we got a Pioneer uh, DV440, uh, which uh, I want to say, yeah, and I, I looked them up a while ago, I don't remember exactly. I want to say like 2002 or 2003 uh, CD DVD player, right around the $250 range. So we've moved up you know, a tier. And then uh, on the bottom here, I found this at a Goodwill for $10, um, is the, uh, is a uh, Sony DVP S7700. And I think this was right around from 2000 to 2001-ish. And I believe this, I want to say this retails for right around $1,300. So we, you know, we have three very big tiers here, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play a CD on this one, and then I'm gonna play a CD on this one, and then I'm gonna play a CD on this one, and see if there's a drastic or really noticeable difference in the sound quality. To kind of, you know, do you really? And and I am not an audiophile snob or whatever, but for the typical person that likes listening to music and all this, you know, yada yada yada. Um, what you know how good of a cd player do you really need if you're just going to hook a cd player to a stereo and then for the receiver i have my marantz sr4021 which i want to say about 2004 to 2006 generation it was right around four or five hundred dollar stereo receiver so in its time it was a pretty good uh, stereo receiver so and then i also have this sony down here um, which I got cheap because the door wouldn't open and it the uh, lithium grease or whatever from the factory just kind of dried up and it didn't want to move so I took it up took the uh, the drive mechanism and tray the mechanism all apart and cleaned it and put new grease on it and it seems to work a little better now um, and yeah it plays fine this is a Sony uh, NS 999ES um, I think it was right around eleven, twelve hundred dollars. Uh, I want to say like two thousand three. I don't know. It might be a little newer. Either way, these two Sony's are were pretty pricey when they first came out. So what we're gonna do anyway? We're gonna play a CD on this pile of junk. I'm gonna play play the same CD on this one and on this one, and maybe on this one. Um, and you can uh, skip ahead through the video. I'm gonna sit here. I've already done it to an extent. I'm gonna sit here and listen and kind of. Uh, refresh my memory and uh, see what I think. Cool? Alright. So, CD we're going to be using is, uh, I've used this before, it's the Junk Poet Chicken All You Can Eat album. Um, only reason I'm using this is because I need a CD. I don't have any other, I don't have any CDs that are copyright free uh, music, but I uh, the person that owns the rights to this music or this band is a family member and I have permission to use it. So <clears throat> that's just what I'm going to have to use. That and I've been to lots of their performances, shows, concerts, whatever. Um, been around them when they're practicing in all formats. I'm very familiar with the music, the songs, and you know how everything sounds. Uh, on the CDs because I'll listen to these CDs a thousand times and I've heard them play live many different places many times so I have a good idea of what I'm listening for I guess so let's uh, let's see what this pile sounds like oh yeah trash 
Ugh. Anyway. Close, load, loading the disc, apparently. I don't, I, assuming it might have came with a remote. I didn't get it one with it. I don't know. Uh, all right, we're going to hit play. And hold on. Let me make sure we get the volume where we want it. All right. We'll do a little bit of listening on this one, song or two here and there. You can skip ahead if you want. And then we'll move the disc to this one and this one. We'll see how it goes. Oh, and I'm uh, just using a set of Sony CS5s. Um, just because I think they sound pretty good. Alright, now we're going to move it over to a different, to the Pioneer DV440 and jump through a couple songs and see if my mind is melted. Alright, okay, this one should be powered on now. I do have a remote to this one, I'm just not sure where it is. <laughs> Don't really need it. So, and I am the... These CD DVD players are being plugged directly into via RCA's into the Marantz, and this is a Marantz. Um, it's just a stereo receiver. It does not have any digital inputs. It has no DACs, and it only has analog inputs. So it's more or less just a stereo amplifier or receiver amplifier. It's just a receiver because there's a tuner in it. But yeah, this has no DAC or digitalness to it. So we're the whole point of this is we're using seeing how well the I don't know the transport and DACs working each one of these and as you go up the ladder how uh, how much of a difference and if there really is much of a noticeable difference noticeable difference when it comes to just playing CDs so we'll get it going in this one we'll do a few songs again and play Okay, <clears throat> we'll move on to the Sony in a second. Uh, just looking at these, it reminded me, a lot of these uh, DVD players, I don't think so much just straight CD players, but we'll say the 192 killer 24-bit DA converter, or even like this one, they're pretty proud of. They have the 96 killer 24-bit audio, DAC, and DTS digital output. And then this one has the dual discrete optical pickups. Now, this... 24, 192, or 24, 96, this does not apply to compact discs or CDs. It may apply to a DVD, because uh, DVDs have different audio. We'll put it that simply. Different audio than a compact disc. Compact discs are always 16-bit, 44.1, pretty much. I mean, that's the standard for a compact disc. It's the Redbook standard. It's what they are. And these are not up converters or up samplers. When this is on there, uh, it more has to do with a, a DVD. Um, and I don't really know much about DVDs. I don't really care for DVDs or Blu-rays or watch movies even. Um, <clears throat> uh, this uh, just basically this applies to DVDs in this case. So don't think these are converting your music to 24-bit, um, etc. They're still going to be 1644-1, and which is fine. Um, I know a lot of people get, well, I don't know about a lot of people. I've had people tell me or, you know, assume this means it's an up conversion or something. This player is actually kind of unique because of the dual discrete optical pickup. It's, I believe it has two separate lasers. It has a laser for video or optical whatever for video and one for audio, which is kind of neat. Um, I don't know if it really helps that much for music, for CDs. Because um, I did, I plugged this thing into uh, my, you know, mod, more modern 1080p flat screen upstairs when I got it. And I still have the, I think it was the Joe Dirt DVD, not the Blu-ray, just the 480p DVD. Put it in that thing and turned it on and I about threw up. <laughs> so I can't believe at one time that was high end because now, uh, you know, we stream 10 times the quality through our phones. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I could barely read the menu. 
Um, yep, DVDs had menus, kids. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's get switched over to the the Sony DVP S7700. Okay. Yep, as soon as I plug that in, you can hear relays clicking and all kinds of stuff going on inside. Uh, by the way, this has like that Sony, typically you'd see like ES stuff, like that copper coated chassis. Like this one weighs nothing. I've picked up dog shits so that way more than this. Um, this Pioneer is pretty typical for a DVD player. Uh, but the Sony, this guy down here, probably weighs 10 or 15 pounds. It's pretty, you can tell instantly by picking up, it's pretty heavy. Um, and it does have a nice, has a headphone jack output on it. And a, a volume, or headphone volume level knob that is just slicker than socks on a rooster. Um, let's get her turned on here. It's all metal. The front's metal. Anodized aluminum. This is aluminum. Snazzy, but you know, for thirteen, fourteen hundred bucks, better be pretty awesome. And then we'll open her up. Ready? Oh, pretty cool, huh? Someday people will be gushing over these instead of turntables. Here we go. Ooh. All right. When you're ready, there we go. All right, here we go. We'll do it again, do a couple more songs. Um, yeah, I think I will do this one. I mean, like I said, if you guys are getting bored, just keep skipping through the video. It's 2020, man. Use the, use the fucking, sorry, freaking. Use the freaking, you know, whatever, bar and drag it. Uh, ooh, a lovely beep. Oh, my bad. Hold on. I didn't switch to RCAs. Getting tired. Stop. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Now we'll get back to it. Ready? Set? Go. This guy hasn't been turned on in probably a while, probably a couple months. All right, no disc. Oh yeah, you're still acting a little slow and tired. I'm probably gonna have to put a little more grease on that. Get in there. There you go. Yeah, this one's kind of cool. This little paper thin tray is aluminum. It's a lot sturdier than it looks. I'll give Sony that. You could probably. Uh, Put a something pretty heavy on there. I don't know. I'm getting tired, so I'm running out of jokes. Whatever. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is the Sony NS999 ES Shoe Fly. Um, let's give her a go. Oh, we gotta switch this over to. Uh, CD. Then we'll do direct, so there's no coloration added. Um, play. These two, 
over here. Um, didn't really, they pretty much sound like CD players. They sound fine. I mean, CDs typically sound pretty good. Um, yeah, I didn't really, <clears throat> I mean, when you actually sit and listen for differences, which I don't normally do most of the time anyway, um, these two, I didn't really notice much of a difference at all. Now, going up to this one, um, it's not a huge difference. It's not like, holy crap, you know, that's way better. But there is a difference. We, uh, you don't have to listen super hard, but you can tell within a few seconds um, there's definitely better separation of the instruments and, like, the vocals. Uh, there's more depth, which seems to uh, create a better... Oh, you know, like kind of a better 3D sound stage, which also helps create that, you know, uh, off access or that center image, you know. Uh, and then the subtle you know, instruments and sounds in the background of some of the songs, you know, fingers plucking bass strings and just small movements um, are a little more apparent. Again, like I said, this is not like night and day stuff. This is stuff, I mean, going from these, this to, you know, these to this, you don't have to listen, like, super close to notice it, uh, but if you weren't really paying attention, you probably wouldn't notice it. I mean, for most people that just want to pop a CD and listen to music, they probably really wouldn't notice that much. They would probably notice more of an improvement by using better or different speakers or something. Um, but, for sure, and then even this one, I didn't plan on doing this one but uh, why not? It's right here. It's ready to go. Uh, I'd say about the same on a very, and I, I don't know if I could, like these two versus these two, I could probably tell the difference in a blind test. But these two, I could probably couldn't tell the difference, and these two, I probably couldn't tell the difference. Um, this one seems to be a little more full-bodied, almost a little warmer. You know, full-bodied, a little more warmer. You know, still really good separation or anything. It just seems to have a little bit warmer tone to it. Where this one, it's still full body and pretty good. It's not quite as warm and it seems a little more uh, analytical or like detailed, clean. Um, either way, either one's fine. But this one, this is this one definitely sounds pretty warm and full body for a CD player, which is maybe what they wanted. Obviously, they're from different years and different setups, they're going to have different DACs and analog output stages and, you know, etc. Uh, but yeah, I will say these two definitely do sound better, but it's not like, holy crap, like night and day difference. Um, uh, only reason it doesn't really matter so much nowadays is you can get a lot of these super expensive CD DVD players for pretty cheap. Um, they tend to turn up at Salvation Armies and Goodwills and thrift stores and pawn shops, uh, you know, for, I wouldn't, you know, like these ones, I mean, even in working order, I probably really wouldn't pay. I'd probably pay around 50 bucks, 100 bucks tops if it's in really good shape and it works well. Um, if you find one for cheap, like 10 bucks or something, and the tray's not working right or something, it's not too hard. I did a video on it. It's not too hard to open them up, kind of look around. A lot of times they just need new grease and stuff on the the little gear mechanisms and stuff that open the trays. And, uh, maybe while you got it open, take a like a microfiber and clean the little laser eye if it's accessible and kind of blow it, clean it out and check everything out. And usually, um, I've had a handful of them. I mean, this one didn't work when I got it at all. It would turn on, but it wouldn't read disc. You put a disc in and just say no disc or whatever. And all I did was open it up. It really wasn't that dirty because it, this one, it's a small cheap unit. It has no vent holes because it doesn't get hot. And But I blew it out anyway. Took an old paintbrush and kind of dusted it out. Cleaned the laser with a microfiber uh, towel or you can use like coffee filters because they're lint free um, and, you know kind of just clean it up wiggled some wires some boards around you know put it all back together and it started working so um, don't know what I did but it did something and it's worked ever since uh, yeah this one I got at Goodwill it just said sold as is on the back 10 bucks and uh, I'm like well whatever I'll buy it and you know maybe I'll get it working and I didn't have to do anything to it. It worked just fine. The person turned it in, and apparently they didn't bother to plug it in and see if it works or not. So, whatever. I don't, I normally would have this one hooked up, 
because I tend to kind of lean towards the sound of this one. Uh, but this one does do super audio CD where this one doesn't, and I like to, when I don't really listen to super audio CDs, I like to have the option just in case I come across one at a thrift store and want to bring it home and try it out. But the next option from this, and I'm not going to do it in this video because this video is already getting long like all my videos. Um, <clears throat> and I'll say it again, I don't, I don't do this just to pimp products and get free stuff. I do this just because I like doing it, and I want other people that like doing it just to kind of hang out and we'll mess with some audio gear kind of thing. Um, but anyway, the next thing I'm going to do, it won't be in this video like I just said, it's going to be in another video. is I'm going to take this SMS M100 DAC, which is, I don't know, these are, I'm going to say around 60 to 100 bucks, depending on the day and where and when and used or new. Uh, but they're very accessible. They're around. They are easy to use, plenty of inputs, outputs. They, uh, for their price, they, are, they perform very well. Um, the DAC... And everything in this is going to perform better than what most E players come with, and even more expensive CDs and DVD players are going to come with. That, and even though these do sound good, this is from like 1999 or 2000. This is from like 2003. They're still quite old. Um, but what I want to do is take this and this, and we're going to. This doesn't have an optical, but it does have a coax digital out, which will run into this. Let uh, instead of using the crappy DAC in this. We're gonna let the DAC let it. We're gonna hand over a digital signal to this. Let the DAC in this, uh, you know, do its DAC work, and then send it over to the Morantz and see if we can make this pile of crap sound any better by just getting a different DAC for it. And it doesn't have to be the cheapest CD player. It's a it's a scenario in which you already have a CD player or a five disc changer or something you're comfortable with and you like it, but you want to see if you can make it sound any better and instead of getting a whole new unit or CD player which you're probably going to have to spend a lot to get one that's going to include a decent DAC and everything in it is it just cheaper to go buy something like this and let this do the DAC duties and just use your uh, CD DVD player as a transport so we will see uh, I don't have time tonight uh, like all my videos they are late at night when I'm tired I'm squeezing them in and yeah, hope you had fun. Hope you found this interesting. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of shenanigans. Uh, leave any polite comments or whatever you want to say down below. And hope you're around for the next video. Later.